Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. The day of the Lord approaches, and it will arrive with devastation from the Almighty. As mentioned in Isaiah 13 6, a tempest is brewing, one far graver than mere winds and rain. This is not just a minor disturbance in the atmosphere, but possibly a forewarning of heaven's own reckoning. Could the turmoil swirling in the skies signify more than just a meteorological phenomenon? The Bible prophesies a time when the heavens will tremble, the earth will shake under God's power, and the hearts of men will be filled with dread. What if the storm we observe serves as a caution, a gentle nudge from the divine urging us to awaken from our complacency? Are the howling winds delivering a message from above, calling us to repent before the hour of judgment descends? With every flash of lightning and roll of thunder, might we be witnessing the early tremors of a looming wrath that will leave the world in awe? The storm transcends nature. It is God's voice communicating through the elements, urging us to recognize the signs before it's too late. The tempest descended with a fierce vengeance, unleashing a catastrophic force that seemed to tear apart the very essence of existence. What began as a serene evening, bathed in the gentle glow of twilight, was violently interrupted by an overwhelming storm that swept across the sky, unleashing chaos upon all below. The once calm heavens erupted in a fury beyond comprehension, echoing Isaiah 29 to 6, you will be visited by the Lord of hosts with thunder, earthquake, and great noise, with whirlwind and tempest, and the flame of a devouring fire. As the sun set over New York City, painting the sky in hues of gold and purple, that fleeting beauty was soon overshadowed by an ominous shroud of clouds. These foreboding clouds carried a weight of judgment, as if the very hand of God was pressing down upon the earth. The once gentle breeze morphed into a howling gale, roaring through the streets like the voice of heaven itself. Heavy rain fell in torrents, cold and unrelenting, flooding the streets and consuming everything in its path, as though the earth was drowning in its own defiance. Thunder crashed, a deafening roar that reverberated through the heavens, shaking the city to its core. Reminiscent of the divine power, described in Job 37 to 5, God thunders wondrously with his voice. He does great things that we cannot comprehend. The force of the storm rattled skyscrapers, shook windows, and instilled terror in the hearts of those seeking refuge from the chaos. Blinding flashes of lightning slashed through the sky, jagged and fierce, resembling the swords of unseen angels engaged in battle in the heavenly realms. Each bolt seemed to proclaim the words of Psalm 97 to 4. His lightning lights up the world, the earth sees and trembles. As the storm raged on, horrifying glimpses revealed a world unraveling trees that once stood tall were uprooted like mere twigs, and power lines snapped, their collapse marked by wailing sirens that filled the air a haunting reminder of humanity's fragility. It felt as if all of creation had risen up against humanity, resonating with Romans 8.22. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. In the midst of the storm's fury stood the Statue of Liberty, a symbol of human freedom, now dwarfed by the elemental wrath surrounding it. Lightning struck the towering structure with unbridled intensity as if even this emblem of human achievement was powerless against divine judgment. Its once majestic form trembled under the onslaught, and skeptics who had dismissed the supernatural found themselves questioning whether this storm was more than a mere act of nature, whether it was a divine sign, as warned in Luke 21:25, There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, Nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea, despite all of humanity's advancements and technological marvels. The Statue of Liberty stood as a fragile monument against the unstoppable force of creation. The storm appeared to be a divine reckoning, a humbling reminder that human accomplishments, no matter how grand, are but dust before the Creator's might as the wind howled and the rain lashed down. It became evident that mankind is powerless against the fury of the one who fashioned the heavens and the earth. The ocean to rebelled, 
once a symbol of tranquility now raging with unimaginable fury, as if stirred by forces beyond nature. Waves surged with terrifying strength, crashing against the shores and consuming everything in their wake beach fronts, buildings, and lives swept away in an instant. It was as if the sea itself echoed Revelation 16 to 3. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse, and every living thing died. In the midst of the chaos, as New York City was ravaged by the storm's fury, people grappled with a chilling question. Was this merely a natural disaster or a warning of the apocalypse? Could this be the beginning of the end? As foretold in scripture, the words of Matthew 24 to 37 echoed in their minds, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. The storm felt more significant than a mere event. It seemed to serve as a prophetic sign, a divine call for humanity to repent before it was too late. The once vibrant streets transformed into rivers of chaos, with cars floating like fragile vessels on the rising waters and pedestrians, disoriented and desperate, fleeing to higher ground. The subways became death traps as flood waters surged in, claiming lives and sending waves of panic through the city. Creation seemed to rise in rebellion against human arrogance, declaring the truth of Isaiah to 12. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty, for all that is exalted, and they will be humbled. As the waters receded and the city lay in ruins, a profound realization settled in. This was not just another storm. It was a reckoning a moment where humanity's pride was laid bare before the power of God. Survivors sifted through the wreckage, haunted by the echoes of Revelation 16:18. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake, no earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. They recognized this was more than a natural disaster. It served as a warning. As the storm's fury began to wane, and the once proud city lay in shattered ruins, an unsettling truth lingered, like a suffocating fog in the air. This was not merely a demonstration of nature's untamed wrath. It felt like the prelude to something far deeper and far more terrifying. Could this devastation signify the earth itself groaning in agony, crying out as scripture foretold? The chaos, upheaval, and palpable fear present in every shattered building and frightened soul indicated, we were on the brink of prophetic fulfillment. The destruction was neither random or without meaning. It echoed ancient warnings signaling that something much greater loomed on the horizon. The Bible warns us, just as lightning flashes from the east to the west, so too will the coming of the Son of Man be a moment that will shake the very foundations of the earth. Could this storm, with all its ferocity and devastation, be merely a sign, a whisper within the tempest, urging us to realize that Jesus' return is nearer than we dare to imagine? What if this wreckage, this destruction, does not represent the final chapter, but rather heralds his glorious return? The storm may have passed, yet the true reckoning could be just beginning. In these uncertain and tumultuous times, as the world is gripped by chaos and strife, it becomes increasingly evident that we stand on the precipice of something far greater than we can comprehend. The Bible has forewarned us of days like these, days when the earth will groan under the weight of sin, when natural disasters will strike with increasing frequency, wars will rage, and chaos will engulf nations. These are not random events, but divine signs indicating that the return of Jesus Christ draws near. He promised to come again, not only to gather his faithful into eternal peace, but also to bring righteous judgment upon those who have turned away from his love and grace. As believers, we are called to remain vigilant, ever watchful and prepared, just as the wise virgins kept their lamps burning while awaiting the bridegroom, U 25 to 11, 13. We, too, must keep the fire of faith alive in our hearts, for the day of his return will arrive swiftly and unexpectedly, like a thief in the night, 1 Thessalonians 5 2, 2. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, everything will change. Only those who are ready who have remained faithful will be taken up with him into eternal glory. For those who have rejected God, who have chosen to dwell in darkness, 
The great tribulation awaits a time of unimaginable terror and suffering, as prophesied in the book of Revelation. Wars, famine, plagues, and devastation will sweep across the earth, and the hearts of men will fail them in fear. Yet, for those who trust in Jesus and persevere in faith, his return will not be a moment of fear, but one of unspeakable joy and deliverance. It will be the fulfillment of every hope, the culmination of every promise. As he declared in Revelation 20-12, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Are we prepared to meet him? Have we heeded the warnings? The storm may have passed, but the signs of the times are clearer than ever. Let us examine our hearts and lives, turning away from complacency and seeking a deeper relationship with our Saviour. As we navigate through these turbulent waters of life, let us stand firm in our faith, rooted and grounded in His Word, ever hopeful and expectant for His glorious return. The world may be shaken, but we can find refuge in Him, for He is our rock and our salvation, the anchor for our souls in times of trouble. May we be found faithful, ready and watching, as we await the day when He will come to claim His own. Let the storm serve as a catalyst for spiritual awakening. May it awaken our hearts to the urgency of the hour and inspire us to share the love and hope of Jesus with a world in desperate need of His light. The time is short, and the fields are ripe for a harvest. Let us rise up as ambassadors of His kingdom, shining brightly in a darkened world proclaiming the good news until he comes again in glory. We have yearned for the day when every tear will be erased, every sorrow will come to an end, and we will be in the glorious presence of our Saviour. However, the question lingers, are you prepared? Are your lamps filled and shining brightly? Now is the moment to turn away from the distractions of this world, to repent, and to draw near to God. The hour is late and the signs are unmistakable. Christ's return is near, and we must be ready not just in outward actions, but deeply in our hearts. For those who trust in Him, this is not a time for fear, but for joy, for our Redeemer is on His way. Conversely, for those who have turned away from Him, the time to return is rapidly closing. The Great Tribulation, with all its terrors, looms ahead. Yet it is not too late to seek the mercy and grace of the One who holds eternity in His hands. Though the world is filled with chaos, there is hope the hope in Him who has conquered death, reigns victorious, and is coming soon to renew all things. Will you be prepared when He arrives, in a world consumed by turmoil, where storms rage and disasters strike? We are continually reminded of our vulnerability, yet, Amid physical devastation lies a deeper truth that surpasses the crumbling world around us, a truth that speaks to the essence of our existence. It is in these moments of upheaval, when everything seems lost, that we are called to look beyond the wreckage and reflect on the condition of our hearts. Now more than ever, we must turn to faith, grasp the eternal message of Jesus Christ, and embody the sacred calling placed upon each of us to love deeply care sincerely, and honour the magnificent creation entrusted to us. The Bible consistently reveals the transformative power of love, the greatest force capable of healing brokenness, restoring hope, and illuminating even the darkest of times. In the Gospel of John, we are given a central commandment, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another, John 13, 34, 35. This is not a mere call to superficial affection or empty kindness. It is a profound, life-altering commitment to love that encompasses every person, creature, and the very earth itself reflecting the unconditional love Christ has shown us. In moments of distress, our instinct may be to retreat shielding ourselves from the world and guarding our hearts. However, Jesus invites us to a far greater purpose, to step into the storm, shine his light in the darkest places, and extend his love in tangible ways. The world is yearning for this love now more than ever. In the face of disasters, 
conflicts and divisions, we are summoned to be peacemakers, healers and vessels of divine grace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God Matthew 5-9. Peacemaking transcends the absence of conflict. It is the courageous pursuit of harmony, justice and reconciliation. It involves creating spaces where healing can occur whether in our homes, communities or around the globe. As followers of Christ, we are entrusted with this sacred mission. We are His hands and feet on earth, called to bring His peace to a world that so desperately needs it. But how do we live out this calling practically? It begins with a heart rooted in faith, because true faith leads to action. The book of James reminds us that faith without works is dead James to 17. Our belief in Christ inspires us to live differently, setting us apart through our actions that reflect the very heart of God. We are called to love people, care for animals, and nurture the earth itself. Each act of love mirrors God's care for all creation. Let us prioritize our love for people, for the world is rife with pain physical, emotional, and spiritual. Whether through the devastation of natural disasters, the heartbreak of personal loss, or the injustices that plague our societies, countless souls cry out for compassion, hope, and love. As Christians, we are not called to turn away or judge from a distance. We are too drawn near to the brokenhearted, just as Jesus did. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit, Psalm 34 to 18. In every act of kindness and gesture of compassion, we extend God's healing touch to a world yearning for his love. Yet, love cannot remain mere words. It must be accompanied by action. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the sick, and comforting the lonely these are not just good deeds, they are acts of worship. Jesus himself said, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me, Matthew 25 to 40. Every act of love becomes a living testimony of our faith, a tangible expression of God's kingdom on earth. Our love must extend beyond humanity. We are also called to care for the animals that God lovingly crafted. The Bible often speaks of God's concern for all living beings, reminding us that His love encompasses all creation. In Proverbs, it is written, The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Proverbs 12.10 Caring for animals reflects God's righteous nature. As stewards of the earth, we are entrusted with their well-being whether through kindness to our pets, advocating for humane treatment, or ensuring wildlife thrives, we are called to protect and care for life in all forms. Additionally, we must not forget our sacred duty to care for the earth itself. This world, with its beauty and wonder, is a gift from God. In Genesis, we learn that God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it Genesis to 15. This mandate remains unchanged. We bear the responsibility of caring for our planet, cultivating it, protecting it, and ensuring it is a place where all life human, animal, and plants can flourish. In an age of environmental degradation, threatening delicate ecosystems, Christians are uniquely called to lead in the stewardship of creation. This is not just a political issue, it is deeply spiritual. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, some 24 to 1. As his people, we are tasked with caring for his creation not merely as caretakers, but as faithful stewards of the beauty and wonder entrusted to us. The Apostle Paul writes, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed Romans 8.19. Creation itself longs for redemption, for the day when all things will be made new. Until that day arrives, we are called to honor the earth and all its creatures, recognizing that our treatment of creation reflects our reverence for the Creator. In these uncertain times, when the world appears to be unraveling, it is easy to feel powerless. Yet, as believers in Christ, we are never without hope. We are called to be lights in the darkness, beacons of hope for those who suffer. The love of Christ urges us to live boldly, act courageously, and love extravagantly. This love must drive us to care for one another, the animals, and the earth, 
acknowledging that all of creation is interconnected. By caring for creation, we honor the Creator's design. Let us rise to this sacred calling with renewed hearts and emboldened spirits. Let us love passionately, serve devotedly, and steward God's creation wisely and carefully. As we do, we will witness the transformative power of Christ a power that not only heals the broken, but restores the world to the glory for which it was created. This is our mission and our purpose. Let us move forward in faith, courage, and unwavering hope in the One who makes all things new. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13:13. 13, 13. Let love guide us as we work to bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. As we stand on the edge of these prophetic times, we must remember that the return of Jesus Christ is not a distant event. It is approaching us with breathtaking speed. The signs are all around, and the urgency is undeniable. Now is the moment to prepare our hearts, align our lives with God's will, and live with divine purpose. The time is short, and we cannot afford complacency. For those who remain faithful and steadfast in their devotion, the promise of eternal life remains secure a life where all pain, sorrow, and suffering vanish, replaced by everlasting joy and peace in His glorious presence. Yet, we must not overlook the sobering reality for those who turn away from Him, who reject the gift of grace. The time of great tribulation will come like a mighty flood overwhelming, inescapable, and terrifying beyond comprehension, just as in the days of Noah, the flood waters of judgment will cover the earth, leaving no place to hide Matthew 24, 37, 39. The choice is before us now. We must choose this day whom we will serve, for the window of grace is closing. Jesus is coming soon to gather his people and bring them home. Can you envision that moment the day when every tear will be wiped away? Every heartache will dissolve into unimaginable joy, and we will stand face to face with our Redeemer in His glorious presence. No more pain, no more death, only the radiant peace of eternity spent with Him. The question is not if He will return, but whether we will be ready. Are you prepared to meet the One who gave His life so that you could have eternal life? Are you ready to step into the light of His love, casting aside the burdens of this world and embracing the freedom that comes from living in Him. Now is the time to make that choice to surrender our hearts fully to Him and embrace the life He offers. Let us pray, reflect, and act in love, ready to share His message with all creation. May we stand firm, knowing that the One who promised is faithful, and His return is drawing near. Let us fill our lamps with oil, shine brightly in the darkness, and share His love with the world. Together, we can be part of the great harvest as we point others to Him, the source of hope, love, and eternal life. Let us declare with fervor, Come, Lord Jesus, we are ready.